Welcome. Today we open a new chapter. Up until now we started uh, to calculate some pre-trained models, but today we're gonna implement an additional learning step, some unsupervised sentence embedding learning with BERT transformers. And there's a new methodology I'm going to show you that has been published by a scientist, by researchers, that has some very nice implication. So we import our NumPy, we import a UMAP, we import our cluster algorithm, sklearn, all the standard stuff you already know. Then I import some text, some sentences. I have here the latest 300 research projects from a European research program. And what I end up with are sentences. And now you can see we have 3,387 sentences. We could calculate the maximum length, but this is not important. What's really the new step, and this here is the reference using transformer-based sequential denoising autoencoder for unsupervised sentence embedding learning. It, it was published in archive in April 2021. So quite recent, and here is the code published within those documents. What we're gonna do? We have a model. Uh, I chose BERT base uncased, and we, as you all know, we have a transformer model. We have a pooling layer. We have our sentence transformer where we have the word embedding model. We have the word pooling, and now comes the interesting part because now we're gonna for the first time, train the system on a domain-specific knowledge. And as you can see here, the denoising autoencoder dataset enables exactly this. We download BERT, and you see you get some warnings. Ignore the warnings. And here we go now with the main challenging task. And you will find, like I have, uh, only a CPU and no um, NVIDIA GPU, where I have no CUDA cores. Therefore, I will not be able to use GPU acceleration. And as you can see, training our model with some domain-specific knowledge. And this domain-specific knowledge is exactly the set of all the sentences. So a real interesting way to further train our sentence embedding with some domain-specific knowledge and as you can already see here, even I activate all 12 threads on my CPU, this is going to take a long, long time if you have no GPU acceleration. And I can see here for a benchmark, just running four epochs for a certain uh, Deloitte paper with only 1,300 sentences, it takes me about 51 minutes on all 12 threads parallel 100% on my local machine. And as you can see here, for the first epoch, we have here an iteration on 53 steps. And just for 2%, it takes a long time. And says for one epoch, it takes about 50 minutes. So if you have more than 3,000 sentences, you need to switch to a GPU. Now, since I have no GPU available locally, the only thing I do, I switch over to Colab. I run exactly the same notebook as you have seen on Colab, and the uh, speed difference is just amazing. So what we do next, we just download our, we ha have the model, we encode it, and then we just download what Colab has been calculated. And the way I do it is exactly, this is the command I run on the cloud in Colab, I say, okay, you calculate it and please use Pickle. You just dump it. I have my sentences. I have my high dimensional embedding. I think with this, it is 768 dimensional. I use the highest protocol uh, parameter in addition. And then I just download it. If I have it in Colab, I download it locally to my machine. And then here, as you can see, import Pickle. This is my directory. My file name is this one, a Pickle. And I open the path and I have here my sentences and my embeddings. And if I do this, let's have a look. Oh, hold on. I have to stop the other task. Done. I load it. This is wrong. This is what I want. 
the embeddings have now a shape of 3,387 sentences, and each sentence has a sentence embedding in a 768 dimensional feature space, and my sentences are here also. So the main step is go to call up, run the code I showed you, and about half an hour time, when you have 20, 30, 50, 80 epochs, you will come up with a result. Now, the next step is quite easy. All the traditional UMAP dimensionality reduction I use here because it's just 3000 sentences. My UMAP neighbors are five, and I project this in a five dimensional space. I have a minimum distance 0 0.1, a learning rate with 2.0 because I have quite a lot of epochs, I run this. Of course, the metric we're gonna apply is the cosine similarity. And if it's done, you get an embedding of our 3,387 sentences in exactly five dimension. Now, we're gonna cluster it. And HDB scan is our cluster algorithm. You see here all my specific parameters. And from my sentences, I get about 28 clusters. Yeah, you can have a look at the tail. We do the same now for a three-dimensional visualization because five-dimensional, there are some problem with YouTube in a five-dimensional visualization. We construct the fuzzy simplicial set, all the trees, and then what we do, we get a cluster where for each cluster, we can identify the sentences. And from those set of sentences that we have, we simply calculate all the sentences belonging to a cluster. What I do here, and I've showed you before, this is all, you're all familiar with these steps. Those are the bigrams. I just have a look just to make sure that I understand the content of this document. The content are 300 project description of actually R&D projects within the European Union that has been funded with public money. And you see that artificial intelligence plays a real fr uh, frequent role here. Machine learning, next generation, big data, the quality of life, risk assessment, intelligence, AI. Of course, it's a project description of so project aims, the use cases, the building blocks, healthcare, urban health, decision making, citizen science, cancer patients. And here we go. So yeah, this is definitely something that I'm going to be interested in, the topic of 300 research projects and we cluster it in a certain amount of cluster. Then you can increase or you can decrease just as you wish. Our visualization. Now, I'm of course interested here in exactly the clusters and the content of the clusters and the top wording within the cluster. But what I like to do is I have a look at all those sentences. And here, each dot is a sentence, and we have 3,300 dots, 3,300 sentences in this three-dimensional graph. And what I like is to have a look if really all the areas contain some clusters, that there is not an area where there are thousands of points that have not been identified as a cluster. If you have a look, you see, okay, the whole volume is more or less evenly clustered. I just deactivate the noise. And now I have all my sentences that belong to a specific cluster. And as you can see, because we've chosen a certain set of parameters for the clustering, we get quite a lot of clusters. And if you want to have 300, over 300 research projects in detail, you see here, that the cluster performance with the sentence embedding training on a domain specific knowledge, and this is exactly the sentences, really yield some very interesting results. The first is forest genetic resources, forest genetic satellite observation, coastal flood, forest genetic resources. Then we have a cluster with virtual reality environment, knowledge growth, artificial intelligence, reuse research, virtual reality, big data, the semantic web. Then of course some, if you want, administrative consortium, complementary exercise, consortium composed, academic, industrial. Here's a cluster, agri-food, about crops, food processing, the human robots, 
some robotics, some farming robots. Now it's clear what this cluster is about. Some agronomics operation. You have robotics technology, space robotics, space mission, space robotics technology, and so on. Then, of course, you have a topic on risk assessment, risk assessment strategy, human exposure, drinking water, interesting to find it here, human risk assessment, the microbiome functions. Another is patient-specific dental implants, human eye, non-invasive, human proteome, human cells, human eyes, viral infection. Interesting, security policy is also a cluster that's identified. We have a big cluster on urban health, on health well-being, on urban planning, and cluster urban health, European cluster urban, and you can see AI models. Hey, here, yeah, that's nice. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, AI systems, explainable AI, intelligence AI, deep learning, digital twin, that's something that the industry is really interested in to predict the maintenance circles and the maintenance cost, prevent diagnose, patient-specific protein building. And you see that you really get a good idea if you have a manifold of more than 300 projects, what would be the main cluster within this project. And yeah, I don't want to go in detail, but I think the video is already long enough. So, hey, really impressive new methodology to train your sentence embedding on the sentences itself. And I would recommend that you give it a try, have a look at it. Unfortunately, if you have no GPU, you have to switch to Colab, to Google Colab, to run the computation over there, import it back to your local PC, and you can have some interesting visualization, and you will see the algorithms performs quite nicely. Thank you.